Welcome to CivilNet. My guest today is Dr. Frida Jordan, who is a biochemist and the founder, and now the president still, of the Armenian Bone Marrow Registry. Uh, Frida, welcome to CivilNet. Thank you, Zagbi. Um, you and I are old friends, colleagues. Yeah. We fought the good fight together for many years in the diaspora before independent Armenia. Mm -hmm. And now we've each chosen our way of continuing our activism, doing our work. And you, who've also been very politically active, could have chosen all sorts of other ways than to set up a bone marrow registry, which most people don't even understand, mm -hmm. except that we know it saves people. And well, first, tell us exactly what you do, and then I'll ask you why. Yeah, I, I decided uh, 15 years ago to focus on my expertise, which is establishing a bone marrow donor registry uh, and the laboratory associated with that. So I, uh, we saw the need, the desperate need to have a bone marrow donor registry for Armenians because we had a lot of Armenian patients throughout the world who could not find a compatible match. What does that mean? Contabi compatible match is genetically uh, identical match that has the same factors which are very important for bone marrow stem cell transplantation. Without that match, that patient cannot survive uh, if it doesn't go into remission after the, uh, the routine chemotherapy and radiotherapy. So, basic understanding. Someone has a serious blood disorder or disease, mm -hmm. and the only way to fix it is by a bone marrow transplant. The final stage of treatment is bone marrow transplant because it, uh, probably uh, uh, on occasions the patients go to into remission after the chemotherapy. But and the problem solved. The problem solved, but uh, unfortunately most of them relapse. That means their disease, their disease come back, their cancer come back, and, and the final treatment is for them to have a bone marrow stem cell transplant, otherwise they cannot survive their, their disease. So the match is most likely to come from another Armenian. For uh, the immediate match is from within a family member. That's the most uh, you know, ideal match. If you cannot find a match within the, your own family, then it's the, be the best option is to go within your own ethnic group. And it, in this case, it's Armenians. And even you don't find within Armenians, then you have to go to the worldwide. And that was the reason why we decided to have the Armenian bone marrow donor registry. So it would the probability of finding a match for an Armenian patient, it just gets higher. And the rest of the world, I assume, has these. It's not like Armenians are, are I mean, the Germans must have this and the French must have this. Yeah, there are, there are currently a lot of uh, bone marrow donor registries, and Armenian is one of them. We have 25,000 strong members now on our registry. And still, we have to uh, add more um, donors to our registry because we cannot find matches for all of our Armenian patients. So we, we cannot stop there. We have to continue recruiting new donors and increasing our uh, numbers uh, on the registry. So the 25,000 you have includes me. What I did was sit down and somebody drew a little blood from me and I gave them my name, address, phone yes. number. Yes. I'm in there. You are there. That's you it. You are there for uh, until you are... 50 years old, and after that, we keep the donors on the database uh, until 60, but the recruitment age for our uh, registry is between 18 and 50 years old. After that, we don't uh, recruit donors. Because the time frame the in which you might need life, them. Right. So-called the chef life gets very low, and then we spend a lot of money on the uh, uh, recruitment and testing, so we want to keep donors who have got longer, uh, time to be a donor and to serve a patient. Nobody's ever before said my shelf life is decreasing. This is good. <laughs> but we it, won't go it there. It turns out <laughs> transplantation. Not we won't go there. <laughs> yes. Okay, now I'm going to use a little bit of logic here. You're doing something that is uh, across the USC, across the nation. Yes. Um, it costs me nothing except to sit there and feel that needle go for a minute. Mm -hmm. The rest of the work you do uh, at the end of the day, it's going to help somebody, most likely an Armenian, but not necessarily. Absolutely. So why is it you only have 25,000? Mm -hmm. Well, there are several obstacles to that, or challenges, I would say. That's a better word. One is the Armenian diaspora. We have 3 million Armenians living in Armenia, the rest is outside the world. So if it's this becoming a very pan-Armenian, Hamaikakan registry, it has to uh, also um, uh, give the opportunity for Armenians to take part, both in Armenia and outside. 
So far, we have uh, recruited in 18 different diaspora countries, as well as Karabakh, Armenia, and all the neighboring countries. That's one challenge, which is a historical challenge for us. So that means it's far, therefore it's expensive, therefore it's, it's difficult. It's very expensive to sure. travel, very expensive to explain. And thank God we have the infrastructure of the um, uh, foreign ministries, which is the basis was put down by uh, our Oskanian, uh, ex-foreign minister. Uh, and uh, he helped us to recruit different embassies to help us with the spreading of the word because we are a non-governmental independent organization and we don't want to, to be partnered with any political organization. And we see the, our embassies as our uh, natural. independent natural bodies to be partnered with. So that's one uh, challenge. The second challenge is challenge of not knowing what Bomar Donor uh, Registry does, challenge of uh, uh, um, of thinking that this is a very complicated procedure, right. uh, it, it might paralyze you, you go down to the, your spinal uh, cord and all that which is completely nonsense. All you do is just through uh, stem cell apheresis which is like uh, donating blood or platelet, you collect your stem cells, we collect your stem cells and then we infuse, it, infuse the stem cells to the patient. So, But that's only the, if you find a match. Right now all you want from me is a, is a vial of blood. It's a vial of blood or just a swab. Just and a then, saliva swab. And then the commitment that you will become a, a uh, if you become a potential donor, you will donate your stem cells, which is totally non under anesthesia condition. It's very easy and it just takes a couple of two or three hours. Now, that's the other challenge of uh, not knowing. So that, that, and the reason, uh, and to overcome that challenge, we have been doing extensive outreach programs both in US, both in Armenia. We go to every school, uh, to churches, different churches, through our media, uh, you know, we have our own TV program. We try to reach different people. But again, I hear that, oh, we didn't know about you guys. Sure. And the only time they knock our, our, out our door is they, if they have a patient in their family. Sure. And they are be, being victim of this disease. And then everything will become urgent. We need a donor. And then everybody, everybody wants to help. Um, okay, that's two obstacles. That's two. The third obstacle is um, uh, this project is not for Armenia per se, it's for all Armenia throughout the world. But we cannot serve truly our patient population in Armenia because when we find a match for our Armenian patients, then they cannot have their transplant in Armenia because we don't have transplant centers in Armenia. And, and, that's, uh, and that is one thing that uh, we have to ho hopefully overcome. Uh, Why? Be because, what's the difference? Uh, what's the difference between in whether the center is here or in Germany? No, the, the because they don't have a transplant center in Armenia, so bone marrow transplant center that they, they don't perform here. So even if you find a match for Armenian patient in Armenia, it just gets wasted because they cannot use it if they don't have the finance to uh, do the transplant. And that's uh, one of the way of finding a finance. If you, you don't have uh, enough money yourself is to find a sponsor. And thank God we had a case where Viva Cell, Raf Bierikian was very instrumental to find a, uh, to give the finance for a patient to go and have the transplant in, the, uh, in Iran, which they have a lot of transplant centers, but they don't have a bone marrow registry but they have the money to have the transplant center. So we hope very much that within two years we can have transplant center in Armenia so we uh, serve our patient population better in Armenia. But for patient outside Armenia, there is no problem. We had a patient uh, recently in Los Angeles, which by the way is the uh, grand, great grandson of Diana Apgar, the famous uh, the consul, uh, the in consul Japan. general in Japan. And During the, the first Armenian the, Republic. Yeah, first Armenian Republic. We found a match for him. And, and interestingly, the match is, is from Iran, from the same Julfa Isfahan region. And it, it's amazing. The genetics is amazing. It doesn't matter where you are. You still are, are connected to your, your genetics through the Armenian genes. That's a fantastic story. We should do that. Just it that is, story. It is, it's, 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 it's fantastic because we, I didn't know who uh, our patient was. But when I talked to the patient because we ask, usually ask where the patient family is coming from. And when they say it's from Julfa, I said, Julfa, where? You're from Julfa. Yeah, they're from Julfa. But so are you. Uh, my half half is from Julfa, Isfahan region. And then they said it's a Julfa. I said, well, who was his ancestor? And they said, Diana Apgar, the famous. Uh, 
Consul General of Fantastic Armenia. that the, uh -huh. those genetic yes. roots continue. Yes. So uh, that patient in Los Angeles has got no problem. We have found a match which is in Iran. We have talked to the guy and he's more than willing to donate. So now that we have a uh, har harvest center in Yerevan, so that patient in uh, Iran will come to Armenia, donate uh, his stem cells, and then we transfer the stem cells to our patient in Los Angeles. We had a, just a recent case where the patient was in uh, Ulm, um, and the Armenian patient from Ulm, and the uh, sister was in Yerevan, so we uh, harvested. harvested stem cells of sister. And by the way, the Germans didn't want to give uh, a visa to the sister to go to Germany, <laughs> because the sister was there uh, on an um, asylum basis. Uh -huh. and, then, and the Germans told this patient's family that you have a very good harvest center in Armenia, you can do it there. <laughs> So we did the harvesting, we sent the uh, stem cells to Germany and uh, the patient is doing excellent and we, the patient family did a big matach in, in our center. So it works, the, everything works. But what we have been doing recently, we have uh, going beyond only the blood diseases and we want to serve a more uh, wider population basis like um, uh, patients with lymphoma, patients with different tumors, which can be cured by autotransplantation, which is the first uh, stage of doing any transplantation. And what it means is that you collect your own stem cells, you, do, you go through your extensive treatment, you freeze your cells and then you can reinfuse it and then you can, your bone marrow will start regenerating new cells. Now this system, it works very well and we had five cases of autotransplantation in Armenia, which I'm very proud to announce it. And we are going to help uh, also different diseases that have neurological diseases, uh, MS patients, they can benefit from this autotransplantation. Multiple sclerosis. Multiple sclerosis and different um, allergies, uh, food allergies, food poisoning. You know, the technology is here. And the know-how is available. The know-how, the expertise is here. Our guy is the, it's a very good um, uh, experienced doctor, which I arranged for him to go to Children's Hospital in Los Angeles, get all his treat, uh, uh, expertise. And now he is doing it very nicely. I'm, I'm very proud of them. There aren't many people in the world who can say, literally, I helped save somebody's life. That's true and you guys are saving lives. And you're giving me the chance to participate in saving a life. Absolutely. And Seems simple enough. It's very simple. I mean, what are the chances that you can save somebody's life by just sitting on a chair and you know, going to, to a very two hours, probably boring, but we put a video for people to watch, a program donating your stem cells and saving somebody's life. And, Perfect. Yeah, and our mission is to be that hope of life. The last stage where everybody turns to us is to find that ray of hope and they can see us as that putting all that negative energy into an action to find that uh, magical match for any patient in the world and we are very happy to do that. But we need all our uh, people, community to help us to achieve that. Thank you. I can't end the interview in a better way than that. Thank, Thank you, you very Dr. Much. Frida Jordan who is the founder and the president of the Armenian Bone Marrow Donor Registry. And the explanations are one of those rare sorts of explanations that make you think that, yeah, you really can do something to change the world. So thank you for following us on CivilNet and help us change the world. Mm -hmm.